Hi. Hello. It it's is Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> feels like it's been a while I, since we've been it on. Feels like it has been forever. Right. So weird. So sorry. Yeah. Nothing went as planned no, last week. No, it did not. <laughs> uh, not even close to no. we, what we planned. No, no. So, um, so hopefully you can hear us. It looks like the mics are working. Um, give us a thumbs up. The, the bar is certainly going just fine. Everything. And, uh, uh, Everything looks good on our end. So, hi, ladies. Uh, Great to see you. Hi, you Shirley. You too. Yeah. See those names popping up. It's I always know. nice to see you guys, it too. It is, yes. So, um, even if it is just your name. <laughs> yeah. It has been a crazy week. We've, I, we're have we definitely having trouble getting back into the groove yes. of things. Um, it is hi, Misty. weird. Definitely Great. weird. Thank you so much. Appreciate yes, that, guys. that's awesome. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. So, um, so sad for you that... We had all those days and I couldn't you sew. Couldn't sew. <laughs> I know we were closed and um, I couldn't sew because we didn't have power. And I we have a generator, but it's not a whole house generator, so um, it definitely did not have enough power. Um, and uh, now so I have a new generator. <laughs> yours is like was a fill it with gas. Fill it run. with gas. Yeah. Run. Yes. Um, and it was plenty powerful. Uh, For the fridge and the things that were the yeah, necessities got to have. You know, water, heat. We had TV. We had lights. But, um, you know, as Dave and I were talking about it, he's like, you probably could turn your sewing machine on. But, you know... If there is an issue, do you really, you really want to blow up your machine just right. for that so, purpose? Yeah, yeah, so I didn't. We invested recently. It's mm -hmm. not been forever. It's, a, it's kind of a new thing. Yeah. But totally worth it. And um, I don't have a stove connected, mm. but I have my sewing machine. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. that is uh, really nice. And I have been working. I've got a project. I wasn't working on anything for work when I was sewing. Yeah. Um, I've got a project. It's almost done. Yeah. There well, is a light at the end of that tunnel. So, yeah. And the um, new generator that we bought um, can be a whole house generator. It can work with a transfer switch and, mm -hmm. and, and it works on propane or gas. So we can hook it up to the propane that we already have. So uh, it was, I mean, maybe a small blessing in disguise that it was such a, but had we not bought that yesterday, you I'm 100% certain I would still, be without, would still power. be without power. <laughs> no, um, no doubt. But Absolutely. I'm still glad it was the generator um, that started to die and not my well pump. <laughs> yes. Because Dave and I, was, he's like, well, he's like, we're going to have to, we can't call an emergency because we have no power. So they wouldn't be able, they, even, right. they wouldn't do it on generator. And then he's like, you know, so we could start digging. But, you know, I don't have a backhoe either. I'm like, what do you, maybe we could get to know the neighbor. <laughs> it really is all about who you know, isn't it? It is. But we're, we're happy to have power again. And we got power here on Sunday. So. Yes. We've been back here, and um, I think yeah, I the it. numbers are changing. People in Ann Arbor are getting the rest yes, of their it's power. Yes, starting to come so, back. There's still some spots that don't have it, but yeah. um, big picture, most people do. And, yes. Um, I think we're getting sort of back to normal. I know. Um, I there's a <laughs> We were joking around on Monday. We were like, everybody brought a packed lunch because we were like, I'm not trusting anybody's food. Right. <laughs> We were like all bringing our own because we were like, no, I'm not ordering from anybody because right. who knows what they're been out. not yeah. ordering because heck no, not trusting anybody. No kidding. I know. Dave was telling me Monday about how many uh, cars weren't charged because they're, they have right. the electric Absolutely. things and they, so they couldn't work. It was, it was, it's been quite the week. It's definitely, been. let's hope the snow, how come every time we plan block of the month, so far, every single time we have planned it, we've either had snow or ice, including this weekend. Yeah, so our makeup class is um, supposed to be we Saturday. We have rescheduled for Saturday. You know, it's supposed to be here on Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what, 10 inches of snow? Yeah, they keep changing. So, so. yes, we'll see um, what happens. So yes. if you are in that, that uh, wonderful group, we will uh, plan to be here. You're welcome to come join us if yes. you're coming in for that. Um, and if you can't, we, we do plan to record that one. Yep. And if for whatever reason we can't hold class regularly, we're just going to record it and we'll send you guys the recording. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we have a plan That's C. That's the plan C, yes. <laughs> we're already on plan B. 
So uh, we'll just keep moving on down the line. Yeah, there, we have a lot of alphabet letters left. Lots so of alphabet we'll be to okay. go. Yeah. So um, I've definitely been using the Scan and Cut more than usual. You have. I have. Um, I teased her. I cut a bunch so, of fabric pieces. So you know, maybe pieces. you should use this today. Maybe I should touch, touch the buttons. I told yeah. her, I wonder what important things I forgot. <laughs> You filled in those uh, spots with some new information. With you new had information, to chuck something. I, I'm sure. I, I'm <laughs> sure that I'm I'm overloaded in reach capacity. So, it's Lord, got a, it's got a crying face on it's the machine. It's not happy over I, here. I absolutely love it when my machine cries. <laughs> Just think you that's like the to make funny. people cry? Uh, nope, just my machine. Just I think it's machine. absolutely hilarious when it gets that little crying emoji yeah. on the screen. That cracks me up. It it is funny. So, very mean, I guess. Uh, <laughs> scan and cut. Scan and cut. That is what we're going to talk that about. Is, we're going to talk about the thing today that really makes this different than a silhouette or a cricket mm -hmm. because we don't talk a lot about the scanning feature. No. Nope. Um, but this is a really cool feature. So, it really is. And um, when would a person use the scanning feature? Uh, not, not just to scan stuff, but as a cutting option. If you are not provided mm -hmm. that cut file um, for a project, mm -hmm. so you've got um, an applique project that came with a right. paper uh, file, old school paper, old school paper file, <laughs> and you're like, mm, yeah, I don't want to trace and cut. Mm -hmm. I want my machine to do that for me, and you were not provided the SVG. Right. Um, so we'll show and talk about how to do make that work. Yep. Um, or if you have a project that is completely in your head mm -hmm. and you're like, I want to do this, but you don't have a file. A file. So um, something like that I would say is probably more apt to be a, a vinyl mm -hmm. heat project. Right. But you could certainly applique that on yourself. And I have done that. Yeah. Um, like uh, Greek letters or mm -hmm. things like that where you can cut yeah. something out and then uh, sew them on, those kinds of things. Yeah. So something that you don't necessarily have that SVG provided to you, right? And you have to find a way to make it, right? Or maybe you want to like embellish on something that's super difficult to um, to do. Like uh, you want to put a giant name on the middle of a tote bag, like a duffel bag, and it's too hard to hoop or right. get to where you want that to go. Because you can, and you know, or maybe you've got a machine that's too small. Maybe you're you're yep. you only have a five by seven hoop, and you want and you to, don't want a multi hoop. <laughs> yeah, and you want the letters to be bigger. So this is where Absolutely. you can really um, get those pieces the, bigger. The cool thing about the scan and cut is there's is of course built in text. Yes, but there's what I don't know twelve, thirteen, or whatever texts in there. Mm -hmm. You aren't forced to use those, right. you can do lots of things. So one, what the font, <laughs> what, what the font, you can what the font it, that is a thing, we're not making that up. Um, there's actually an app that you can use, it's mm -hmm. called what the font, yeah. and you can take a picture of a font, it will spit out um, what it thinks that font is called, and then you could download that font and create by typing into your computer. Yeah, You can actually print out of your Word mm -hmm. document, uh, whatever program you use, and then scan that in, and it will create a cut file of that. Yes. Um, so lots of fun things. So much fun. Um, Canvas Workspace, which again, unlike the other, mm -hmm. is 100% free. There's no um, there's no monthly, paid version. There's of no it. monthly fee. There is no version of that mm -hmm. that you have to pay for. There's right. nothing in there. It's a web version and or um, a web desktop mm -hmm. version. The desktop version uses your Windows font file. Yep. So, or your. Um, so your font endless, endless fonts, fontless. Font <laughs> you're not fontless. You're font heavy. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, the opposite of fontless. Yeah. That is what you will be. <laughs> so you can literally pull in. So if you're on the web site version, it doesn't really look at what's in your computer because mm -hmm. you're out on the web. So what's basically in your uh, machine is what's on the website right. version um, for you to type in and, and place your own letters on mm -hmm. there. But when you're on the desktop version, it uses what's in your computer. So all of those fonts that come with Windows, um, Word, yeah. or whatever else that you have added mm. into. Because maybe you have a font fetish. Font fetish, me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that would be totally oh, me. I yep. mean, I have. We had to take we, them off of our yeah, computer. Yeah, I, I actually had to go through and remove some because I had so many, my computer was 
crying. <laughs> we'll just say. Yeah. It was like, mm, ow. That's so, a, one of those things that can really make your embroidery software crazy is by having too many fonts on your computer. So um, it's a thing. Um, if, if you've talked with me, you know I have cutting. Mm -hmm. so I have embroidery softwares, but I also have cutting mm -hmm. software, um, which is the reason that I really have downloaded so many different fonts is because when it comes to cutting, yeah. you're not really limited like you are with embroidery. Right. So there's definitely a lot of fonts that you should not embroider. You don't have to take um, your font with your life. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been eating, drinking today? I didn't eat lunch, that's the problem. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> mm, we're worried about you. <laughs> but um, oh. so the point being is you can cut Almost anything. Almost anything. Yeah. When it comes to a font, yes. um, you know, with the points and the swirls or a big block, you're you're really almost unlimited in what you can do. Yeah. If there are some textiles that may not work as bet as right. good as right. others, um, but you know, especially vinyl, pff, you can do just about anything with vinyl. So, um, which is why I have so many fonts. Um, but. But. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can um, print something yes, um, and, and scan that in or take a pattern mm -hmm. and scan that in and make that work. So that is what today's fun is going to encompass. Yes. And um, I've got a couple things that I printed out. Um, one that I printed, one that I found mm -hmm. um, from a pattern. And I do actually have the SVGs from this pattern because it's a newer pattern. However it's the same type of thing that you might have from an older. They uh, might have the older version of it, the non-embroidered version that we both I actually own, own that pattern yep. at home that doesn't have, have the embroidery. SVGs in there. So um, over here. Are we on this, the screen or the um, scanning mat first? Let's show the, the mat first. Okay. Um, so in here, I have the scanning mat. So in your um, scanning cut, when you purchase a scan and cut, you get cutting mats. Those are the ones that have the sticky on the mats. This is a scanning mat. You don't have to use a scanning mat to scan, but you get a better scan when you do because and there's not um, adhesive there. You don't have all of the grid. Mm -hmm. um, and your paper is not stuck to your And your paper mat. is not stuck. So in here we've got grids and so you, it would pick up all of that um, any little bits of thread or fabric and things that you've got stuck there, it would pick up all of that. Is that the same fabric mat we used earlier? Yeah. It doesn't look as clean as it did like a few minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> That's the one. So a scanning mat has a plastic sheet um, that you tuck your piece in and that's how it keeps it um, in position. You tuck it in. I like to make sure it goes all the way up so it's as straight as possible. Um, that way my files aren't angled mm -hmm. um, because you just never know. This is um, true. And I like to try to keep things as straight as possible. So you can even see up on the screen there's writing inside here. There's writing on the outside um, which of course I don't want to cut. So we're going to also talk about how to get rid of those things. Mm -hmm. One thing, if you only need one file, and there is so much there. Um, if any of you took Sarah's Stitcher's Garden, <laughs> that pattern was, there was so much on any one of those. Yes. Um, it would have been extremely difficult to get the one line that you needed off of that right. to cut one of those. In an instance where they're like overlapping and you've got just tons and tons of information, I would trace onto like a piece of printer paper mm -hmm. and then scan that in. So I would literally lay it on top of, um, we talked about the light box, using a light box um, to use something like that. It's got a little sticky on it. It's, well, I'm not going to turn it on or anything, but using a light box and putting your paper and tracing those designs would give you um, a lot yep. easier time to figure out rather than having trying to figure out how to get rid of part of a line and so on and so forth. So the pattern and how it's written here is definitely going to come into play. This one, they're all separated. It's pretty easy. I can, even if I get 
the interior parts. I can delete that later. It's not yep, a big deal. Absolutely. Um, and I can zero in on specific areas. So this part right here, um, this is actually a um, pin cushion. Those are the parts of the pin cushion and then the little top of the pin cushion. Mm -hmm. So there's different parts and pieces of that. Um, yeah, the three underneath it. Um, yep. Are, These are the, like the tomato parts. Yep, and then um, this is also and the this other, is also part of that, like the alternate um, pieces. Yep. So quite a bit. Oh, we got some gibberish in there still. Um. Yeah, I don't. Nancy, maybe she just hit accidentally yeah, hit maybe. buttons. Um, Karen is uh, able to catch us live, and she is checking in from sunny Florida. Well, oh. it is beautiful here today. <laughs> it, it is at the moment. It's so. um, 53 degrees and sunny, so we actually have a beautiful, um, uh, makes you think winter is over Which almost spring day. <laughs> because, you know, in two days it's going to snow. <laughs> Welcome to Michigan. You know, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Wait five minutes. She <laughs> it'll, is not it'll change. wrong. So um, when you're scanning, you can use a, a sticky mat or you can do the scanning. What I generally tell people is if you plan to do a lot of scanning, it's worth investing in a scanning mat. If mm -hmm. you plan to just really rarely, then it's probably not worth it. Um, but if you think that you're going to be creating a lot, mm -hmm. then it's definitely worth the investment because you do get a better, cleaner scan um, using the mat um, that was intended for that. So um, I'm going to turn my machine back on because, um, well, it went to sleep. It did, the nerve. I, right? <laughs> so um, again, this is just off of a pattern. Um, this is actually our current block of the month um, pattern pieces. So what we're going to do is scan in the mat. If you want to switch over, she already did. Look at that. She is She's pushing buttons right on top of the schedule. I like today. to push buttons. She does. So we've got um, literally our built-in pattern area here. And then I know it sounds really scary. We've got a button a that says button? scan. Well, I wonder what so, you do with that. I, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be one of those days. I know, shocker, guys. <laughs> so when we tap that, we get three options. So this is the same thing that we always get. Um, you have three different things that you can scan, or three different ways that you can scan. This guy here is exactly what it says, scan to USB. This is using the top of the line scanner that is built into this machine as a scanner. It takes a picture of what's on your mat and saves it as a JPEG on your USB. And so speaking of top of the line scanner part, different models of machines do have, have different. different scanning resolutions. That is correct. Uh, dealer models, so the 325 and the 330, they will have a higher scanning resolution than anything else that, any of the ones that you can purchase at like Walmart or Amazon or something like that. That's kind yep. of one of the things that changes between them. That is exactly correct. So that is what this button is. It doesn't do anything or have anything to do with creating cut files. It literally just takes a picture of whatever was scanned on the mat and saves it to your USB in the form of a JPEG. That is a JPEG mm -hmm. for any of you who are like, what the heck is she talking about? Yes, that okay? is a photo It is a photo. File. That is exactly what that is and that is all that does. Okay, like um, the oh. first one here is a direct cut. Mm -hmm. What was that? I said like a pirate. <laughs> wow, Sarah. <laughs> yep, just, just like that. A photo, pi a photo pirate. A photo pirate, yes. Yep. <laughs> the peg leg. Wobbles when he walks. <laughs> there you go. This first one says direct cut. And what that means is when we scan and create the cut file, it will immediately cut so you don't want to use the scanning mat. You're going to want to use a cutting mat because it is going to take whatever file you are creating and immediately cut that shape out of whatever's on your mat. Is there any time when you would use that? Like, have you used that feature? Um, if I am cutting a shape out of fabric, so if I wanted to create, cut out that hexagon, mm -hmm. I could directly cut out that hexagon um, so I could scan it create that file and cut that out immediately. Okay. Um, when um, we have been out like at, uh, Cindy, no, al Cindy always finds the cutest fabrics. Right. And she brings in things with pineapples and seahorses and yes. these cute little things. I don't know what we're gonna do with them, but she can cut out those individual pieces okay. out of those fabrics. Um, if you are a card maker and you want to 
pull out a flower off of a piece of paper, mm -hmm. you could do that. Okay. You could say, I just want that flower cut out mm -hmm. and scan in and then arrow in on that specific area. So once you scan something in, you can draw in on, I'm not on camera there. You can, um, you know, draw in to that specific spot and it will arrow in exactly where you tell it to and it cuts sense. that. What it does not do is save that cut file. Okay. So it cuts immediately and then wherever you want to cut next, you have to tell it where you want it to go. It doesn't, okay. rec it doesn't save it's that cut file. It's not saving the file. That's correct. So it cuts direct from wherever you do tell it to go. Mm -hmm. And then it says, okay, what do you want to do next? Okay. <laughs> because there's no saving. Okay. And there is absolutely no way to do that. All right. Trust me, I've looked and I've tried to find it. Because <laughs> I'm like, well, what if I want to cut another seahorse or whatever that's right next to it? And I just want to move that over? No, you, you've got mm -hmm. to rescan. It does it super fast and easy, but it does not save it. Okay. So that is direct cut. It will find what you uh, have on the mat create a cut file and immediately then cut. It goes right to the cut page and then cuts out whatever it is that you have found. Okay. This one here is the one that we all use most of the time. And what that is, it's scanning to create cut data, which is oddly just what it says on the screen. So I know, right? So when we tap that, it tells you exactly what it's going to do. It's going to um, create uh, data from what you have on screen. We can use it to cut or draw. So you can create a drawing file from this as well. Um, and all we have to do is push start. Um, this is something that we don't really talk about a whole lot, but there is two different recognition modes. Um, the first is black and white. The other is color. We always recommend that you start in black and white mode. If you're not getting the scan that you need in black and white mode, then you can shift over and get into the color and it will pick up quote unquote more things, but mm -hmm. you're going to get um, the cleanest scan generally in black and white mode. Okay. So recommend that you always start in black and white, but to change that, you would just go into your wrench there um, and uh, just change it to color. It's super, super easy. Literally, it's right there. And hey, look at that. There's colors. <laughs> like I said, super easy. So um, all we have to do to that uh, to get to where we want to go here is hit start. And my mat is now going to go through the machine and that scanner is going to just do its job as it's passing through. It is literally centered in the machine. So as it, the item is going underneath, uh, it, it sees what's there. Takes a second and then it pops up whatever I have in the mat up on screen. And so there you can see, you saw what was in there. It's a pretty, pretty clean picture of what I have um, on yeah. my mat. It's even got the little words at the bottom. It even has the little words on the bottom. So over on the right-hand side over here, I have different options. I have outside edges, which is this first one here. I have basically every line you can possibly see, which is the middle one there. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, inner and outside, but not... Um, the insides and the outsides of my insides and my outsides. <laughs> How about that? Did that make any sense whatsoever? <laughs> so if you picture um, using a Sharpie and you have a fine tip or you have one of those huge fat tips mm -hmm. and you draw a letter E with each marker. Okay. And you have a fine tip E mm -hmm. and it's just a straight line. So you have the inside of the E mm -hmm. and you of the, the top part Yep. and you have the rest of it. Mm -hmm. You need the inside of the E to cut out or else it doesn't look like an E. Right. Okay. Now, if you have that super fat tip, mm -hmm. it's going to see both sides of the marker as a line. Okay. In addition to the inside and the outside of the E. Makes sense. That's the difference between the center one and the one on the right. Okay. You've got a line mm -hmm. or you've got each side of the lines plus the inside and the outside of the shape. So hopefully that made sense. Yes. Did that make sense? It kind of makes sense. Okay. So um, which one do you grab? I mean, I feel like if you grab the middle one, you're probably a lot of times going to get way more than you bargained for, right? Depending, depending upon what you're looking at, yes. yes. Sometimes you get more than what you're wanting. Um, it will depend upon the individual uh, design. Mm -hmm. So it... Sometimes that's exactly what you want. 
because you need, uh, so like if you're doing heat transfer vinyl and you want to have a, uh, you want a line, mm -hmm. if it's only a straight line, mm -hmm. you don't have anything to actually weed. Right. You need the two lines. You need the edge, yes. So you need both sides of right. that line. So it depends on what you're doing, whether you have, you know, if you only have one line, um, where am I at? Okay, I'm like, which camera are we on? <laughs> if I only have one line, mm -hmm. when I go to weed that, there's nothing there, it's just a cut. Right. I need actually something in between right. to have, to actually glue down and, and I need yep. that. So I need both sides of that marker right. to, to be able to have. So it just depends on what I'm doing, mm -hmm. what, I, what I need. So, the file is scanned. Can you go if can you pick the different options? Yep. Um, and then with, you'll see something different on screen. So it doesn't go away and you don't have to rescan. You can nope. go through to find out that what the best option is. That is absolutely correct. So this first one here, like I said, it's going to do a preview. It's showing me um, black lines of just the outsides. So you see all of my numbers. I don't can you see that? Should I go in just a little bit more? Yeah, there's like a teeny tiny Let's dot try there. The other way. There we go. That's a little, they can kind of see. Ooh. Oh, that's bad. There. So there's a grayed out section of each different piece. Mm -hmm. Because I only asked for it to go around the outside of my shape, everything inside the shapes completely disappears. Right. So all of my interior letters and numbers, which delineate where that shape goes in my pattern, mm -hmm. I don't need. Right. So it goes away. So that all disappears for me. And what I also have now are these really nice little arrows. So if I only wanted to do those sections of that pin cushion, and I don't want anything else, I can actually zoom in on just the area of my paper mm -hmm. that I wanted to actually work on. Right. So if I don't want every cut file on the page, mm -hmm or every line to cre be created in a cut file, I can zoom in on just the area that I want. Right. And I can move that, it's still a touch screen, so I can go around. And the cool thing about this is I can save, and it'll come right back to the screen. Ah, so, so I can, can save. Pick and choose the parts of this yep. that you want. So I could save the, the thread spool that's right above that, and then come back and save the pin cushion mm -hmm. and then come back and save another thread spool so I have individual files so that I can put different colors, different colors right? down and know you know I'm not getting confused by which one was that and which one was that so on right. and so forth so I can save them as individual files because if we saved it as a whole it's one file right it is one file and the it's individual a little bit cranky sometimes on moving things <laughs> that so because it's a whole file right it so it doesn't file. always it won't let you break it apart it doesn't let you choose whether you can break, break it, it apart. apart or not right so sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't but I don't get to choose whether it does or doesn't mm -hmm. so um, that is like I said able to be moved around and I can't see Zoom which way just a little yeah it's, I'm going the wrong way there you go um, so I can move that around on the screen and then I could hit that preview, it would change because it knows that I've moved things mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And then my next screen, I can save that. It can tell me, you know, save to my machine, my USB, so right. on and so forth. So if I have kind of a mess on screen, mm -hmm. I can smooth out my lines. That's what this little guy down here at the bottom is for. Okay. Ignoring the object size. So if I have little lines in there, we can ignore some of the little stuff which is really nice. Um, I don't necessarily worry about that because I can delete those later. Mm -hmm. So I'll ignore some, but I don't spend a lot of time on that because on the other screen, I have a trash can. So mm -hmm. anything that I don't want there, you can just I can just of. delete them later. So that is, um, in this kind of an instance, this is usually the easiest because I just want that outside line so that's that first set yes and in this kind of a pattern that's usually what I'm looking right, for right because you would want the whole fabric piece you right. wouldn't want I don't want the an outline of the pin cushion pieces right. with nothing in the middle exactly and there I don't would be want holes. the blade to go in there and mark up the center right with 
E11 or whatever happened right, to be exactly. in there. Exactly. So I only want that outside ring. So that's what this guy is here. This one here. Um, in this instance, I'm not going to see a whole lot, but you can see that the numbers have now shown up again. I'm going mm -hmm. to try to zoom in again a little bit. Oh, see, now I'm going the wrong way. Come on. Dang it. There we go. So you can see that I have um, letters mm -hmm. and numbers inside. That means that those would be cut lines, mm -hmm. which we don't want. And... I don't know if you guys can tell at home, but my outside lines got a lot darker. They did. They're fatter. They're so fatter because it, there's two. Because there's two, yeah. <laughs> there's so two more lines bold. there now, so they're more bold. So that changes. You can physically see those changes as you select the different options. So if you're an embroiderer, if you think about that, that is like a satin stitch around the outside edge and nothing on the inside. So that is what that did. It, it gave her like it gave this. me that two line edge. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So I only want one. So I even looking, I'm like, N that's not what I need. I know that I only want one line because mm -hmm. when I'm cutting, I don't want it to cut twice. I want right. it to just cut that one smooth line. So I know by looking at this, this is not the piece that I want. Right. So I'm going to go over to that. I wish I could remember which direction I'm supposed to go. Huh. Got it right that time. I'm going to do this guy here so you guys can see that. And it automatically makes that adjustment. So that is the correct outside line. Mm -hmm. But I'm still getting all that junk on the, on the inside. inside. So I could do one of two things here. One, I could go ho ahead with this mm -hmm. and delete the inside junk right. later. Or go back to the first or one. Or I could go back to the first one. So if I'm getting part of something that is right in one but not in another mm -hmm. so maybe i'm getting something here that i didn't get in the first one then i could do this and delete the, the other the extra part yeah but i was getting exactly what i wanted in the first one so i'm going to go back to the first right so that's how you decide which parts that you are wanting so um steph asked which would you select for the e so for the E, I would select the one that I'm on right now because I need the inside of that E cut mm -hmm. out or else it wouldn't be an E. Right. So in that instance, I'm just going to draw on my screen here. So um, if this part right here were the inside of my E, I would need it to cut on the interior of the black line. Right. To cut out the whole of the inside of the E. Otherwise, also, like, the center of your E has is like a fill It would stitch. be a solid Yes. It would be right. It would be colored in completely with fabric. There right. would be no interior of the E or the hole in an A or what, however you yes. helps your brain to think of that, um, you know, a lowercase E, not an uppercase E. Mm -hmm. um, you need that hole cut out to make it look correct. Like an E. So that's this guy here because you need the inside of that. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, I definitely would need that one. 100%. Yes. Hopefully right. that made that make sense. Yes, I think so. If anybody else has any questions, pop feel them free up to there. pop them Ab up. Yeah, absolutely. then we can answer. So I'm going to switch back to this, and you'll see that I no longer have those dark lines on the inside, which is exactly what I want. I still have a little bit of extra stuff around the outside. I can come down a hair here and get rid of the top. Um, I can't really get rid of this without losing the top edge of my um, bit there. Not a big deal. Like I said, I can delete that later, okay? So I can check my preview, and it's going to show it to me again. I go, yep, but it wants to know that I've previewed it and I've okayed it. Mm -hmm. So once I say I'm good with that, I hit okay, and what it lets me do is save it. So this is my save screen. Do I want to send it to my computer to save it? I can send it over to Canvas Workspace. I can send it to the machine, which is the top left over here or I can put it to my USB. The only thing that I can't do is name it. It's gonna give it its own name. So it's going to be M, however many zeros, and then whatever number, item, however many times I've saved something. So I'm gonna put it to the machine. It will automatically save it into the machine's memory. And then I'm gonna go pull that up so you guys can see what that looks like. And that's where you'll edit. That's where I can then edit out the few random things. Mm -hmm. And then what I generally do, so, I have saved a total of 50 different designs on this machine. So there's M000050. That's what that is. 
it will always be the last item on my um, list. Like the so saved list. The mm -hmm. saved list. It'll always be the last one here. So if you remember a few minutes ago, I told you it'll always come back to the screen. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to continue to save items off of this scan, I don't need to rescan. I can just come over here. I can adjust my settings to get that thread spool and I can resave. Mm -hmm. And I can continue to do that until I get all of the files on that screen so that I'm not, say, I'm not having to scan over and over and over again. Right. So I just keep scan, scan once and keep saving and moving around on my mat. That's awesome. So um, the, what are the items underneath? Um, those so the top line here are happen to be thread spools, and then we had um, the pin cushion items, and then these happen to be the spool caps. Um, I apologize. The um, under oh, this here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like well, that's. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> You're so welcome. I'm so glad I could help you. So if you need to change the grayscale, mm -hmm. so that um, what if if your scan didn't give you enough umph. Yes. For it to be seen, you can adjust the grayscale on screen so that your lines are darker so mm -hmm. that they can be seen. So if you have um, a fancy machine with Design Center, we have that same feature in there. We do. We can yes. increase the contrast of our scan exactly. so that we can see it a little bit better. Yep. So one thing that you'll find is if you are using the scanning mat, that becomes less and less necessary. Mm -hmm. That will help you. Of course, if you have a crappy copy that you're scanning, right. sometimes that's just never going to matter. Um, that's the other reason that I find I, a lot of times, if I am doing this, I will just trace. Mm -hmm. um, I find that if I am tracing, um, if I put my pinky down, my hand is very steady, and I don't have issues of Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people say I can't. I can't trace for crap. It, yeah. It's. It's. You know, I end up with a really terrible Cheeky. line. Yeah. It's a really. So if I if I put my pinky down on the whatever mm -hmm. and then trace, that gives two points, mm -hmm. and then I'm not um, wobbly at all. And the other thing is, you've got that little smoothing line. So if you have a little bit of, mm -hmm. it'll you can smooth, smooth it out, out while you're on there. So, um, so either, practice if you're, your tea pinky. Yes, got, <laughs> got to get that drinking pinky yeah. out there. Um, and I just find that that allows for a very smooth trace. Mm -hmm. It's just one of the little... Good tip. It's just what works for me. Whether yeah. it'll work for you or not, I can't say, but that's how I find that it works um, yeah. the best way for me. So once you have your... Um, designs all saved, then you could go back and scan in if you had multiple pages mm -hmm. and save all of the files that you had um, and then go in and do any editing if you wanted to. Um, That's cool. Or just edit them as, yeah. you're, cu as you're cutting because um, you obviously know what you're wanting to cut. So, right. Um, I, that's how I would go through it yeah. is scan, save, and then scan, go through each individual area. Yeah. So um, that is a pattern. And again, if you have overlapping or way too much trace um, and don't use too thick of a marker so mm -hmm. that you don't get those double lines um, and that they end up the correct size. If you try to use too thick of a Sharpie, mm -hmm. um, it that makes tends to not, um, you can use a Sharpie by all means, but don't do like that really, really fat guy. <laughs> right, because it, it probably wants to give you two lines then, right? It, it would, well, you can select, mm -hmm. so you do have that option to not have the double, but it's still going to change the size of your shape if you use too big of a marker. Yes. And you do want to keep in, uh, size. in that yeah. size range. Yes. So if you use too big of a marker, it can change the size of your shape sure. and affect where it's going to fit in the hoop. Yes, and especially if this is a piece that you're cutting if for, you're doing it for an embroidery. embroidery. If it's yep. something that you're doing traditional if it's just applique, then it doesn't matter so much. Right. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, the no one will. I know. <laughs> I don't recommend pencil, though people want pencil because then if they make a mistake, they, they can, can go erase. back and erase it. The erasing actually is really bad. You're better off just going with it and mm -hmm. fixing it later. Later. Yep. Um, the. Um, super, super fine pens don't mm -hmm. show up very well either. So Sharpies are a great tool. Right. Um, just don't get a super heavy tip. 
Um, so Marianne is asking, how do you keep track of your saved files if you can't rename them? I save to a USB stick and then rename files or folders to keep myself organized. Um, in, do you have a better way? Um, so like I said, you can't rename them in the machine, but they will always be in the order mm -hmm. that you did and you can see, see them in here. So right. depending upon your uh, computer, you might not be able to see the file right. in your computer. So, but you can see them here, right. which is an advantage. Yes. So when you're going in to edit or to cut, you mm -hmm. can see what they are. Yes. And you know, because you just scanned them or did them, you know right. what order you did them in or what project they are working yeah. on. Or if you are coming back to it like a week later, you could maybe put folders on your USB stick Absolutely. ahead of time and name them something that would be, you know, pen cushion. Yep. And then as you're saving your files, you could throw the USB stick and that would definitely help. Yeah, just don't throw it at your friend. <laughs> Um, I don't even know where it went. Just flopped it, right out of my hand under, under my chair. chair. Okay, yeah, it bounced so, off of me in like three <laughs> different spots, and then yeah. So instead of saving the files to your machine, you could save them in folders on a USB stick that you had named because you can see the name of a folder um, on a USB stick in here as you pull them up. You can also when see you, a name when you pull it up. You can see the folders. Yes, yes but what you can't choose the folder when you save it. So you would right. still have to pull it over and drag them into that um, if you were trying to organize them. Yes. You would still have to pull them up. But you know what order they are. And for that matter, um, you could take your pencil that you wanted to trace with mm -hmm. and you could write in 50 mm -hmm. on your on your pin cushion. Right. Um, I mean, I. It's never been an issue for me. I'm not making enough of them for it to be like, mm -hmm. I don't remember what any of those were. were yeah. Um, but if you had, you know, 50 designs, mm -hmm. you could literally write the number that it saved right in your um, file right. so that you had that file name right there and you know what one was what. Um, Marianne asked, so you can save it in more than one place. Yes. When yes. you went, when she went to the save space, yep. so, hit um, okay. Um, if you want to switch. Yep. So when I have that there and I hit, I can save. <laughs> yeah. All right. So when you um, choose mm -hmm. and then say, I don't have a USB in there, but I have one right here for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you threw it at me? <laughs> so it's currently saving to the, the um, machine. I don't know if I can find that from here. <laughs> Miracles can't happen. It was only a one-sided USB wow. today. <laughs> it doesn't usually happen. No, it really doesn't. Um, and then... I can save to the USB immediately after that. Mm -hmm. So without moving anything, I can do that. And so you can see now it's a different name um, because it went to the USB. So instead of M for machine, it's U for USB and how many I've put on a USB. Mm -hmm. So, but again, you can um, write down the name mm -hmm. and you can put that right on your pattern. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, you know, that you can put in pencil and yep. then erase later on if you've renamed it or whatnot, mm -hmm. but so that you know which one is which, um, on your USB, you can say, okay, there's seven, that one is pincushion, and then you can go back and rename them on your USB. Right. All right. At least that's how I would probably do it. Okay. All right. So that is how you would work a pattern that you were given a paper piece mm -hmm. that you did not have an SVG. Okay. Um, there are um, a lot of things that I have done scanning to create mm -hmm. cut files that didn't have a pattern that was just, I want to create this. Yes. And it's a um, whole bunch of, hmm, how can I make that yeah. happen? So ages ago, we did a class. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I swear everybody hated me for weeks after that class. It was not, it was, it was a hard class. It was, <laughs> it was a lot. Um, so what I did was I took a embroidery design mm -hmm. actually out of a machine because that was the one somebody asked me about and I was like, I can figure out how to do this. Um, and I brought it into my software mm -hmm. and I printed it. So I, it was an embroidery design, mm -hmm. printed it, scanned it into the machine, created the file into a cut file, copied it, mirror imaged it. It happened to be angel wings. Mm. So if you've been in here, mm -hmm. they're up on the, the wall. <laughs> and so mirror imaged it. So I had the two angel wings. Mm -hmm. um, we resized them. I mean, it, there was a lot to do in that class. Right. So it was literally taking it from a piece of paper. And you guys know what stitches look like when they're printed, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a smooth line. Mm -mm. If we had just picked an angel wing off of the internet, mm -hmm. it would have been a smoother smooth line, line instead of stitches. So stitches, when they cut, mm -hmm. are jagged edges and, right. you know. So, I mean, it was definitely a handful. And they, everybody learned a lot. But, you know, they were like, oh, my God, this was really hard. <laughs> not because the steps were hard. It was just a lot of things, a lot of things mm -hmm. in, a, in the class. It was a lot going on. But um, you can do that. So you can say, I, I want to put that on a heat transfer instead mm -hmm. of an embroidery design. You can make that happen. Right. It's just a matter of following the steps that you need. Um, and it's, uh, it's fun. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to be like, okay, I want that to go on a really thin t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And there's no way that that t-shirt is going to hold all of those stitches. Right. How can I make that happen? we can iron that on. Okay, mm -hmm. let's let's do it. Let's do it. So, you know, you can take a printout mm -hmm. and turn that into it. So, um, you guys, if you've hung around here, again, you know I like Wonder Woman. So, I printed out a Wonder Woman file off of the internet before... Um, Jeez, oh, Pete's. We got the dropsies I today. was trying to throw that at you and it didn't make it. It did not. Paybacks, trying to give you a paper cut. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so... This is, you can see where I got that from. It was free pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is, um, they're small, as you can tell, eight and a half by 11 sheet. Um, the neat thing, of course, is you can resize. Once you've scanned once it. Once you've scanned things in. So the size doesn't really matter um, on this. <laughs> um, what you do want to pay attention to are, for instance, what these stars would look like um, if that's the one that you really wanted, I would find a bigger one mm -hmm. because those stars are going to come out probably not real. Like as you make it bigger? Well, even in the small one, I'm mm -hmm. probably not going to get a real distinct star. on. The, I, would, I would stab in the dark that that's probably not going to come out super fantastic. But um, the scan still has to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we did save those. I was like, did we save? We did. Um, so we're going to also cut so you guys can see we actually created cut files. Yes. I just was like, <laughs> I did I did do that. So um, I am. Uh, can you zoom out a little bit so they can see the rest of the screen there? Yep. Maybe. There we go. All right. So I am going home, just getting everything off my screen. So again, to scan, I just go into the scanning menu and I'm going to create cut data. And again, I'm going to start with black and white and um, just hits, it's going to scan in the mat. There is a lever on the side of the machine. What that lever does is it raises and lowers the scanning bar that runs across the machine. And so the scanning bar needs to be all the way down when you're scanning so that it's as close to the item that you're scanning as possible. But when we're cutting, if we're cutting something that's thicker because we can cut up to three millimeters of thickness. Mm -hmm. If it's down too far, we need to slide yeah, the it, bar Yeah, and it'll up. tell you. And it will tell you. So um, you don't ever have to remember about that. It'll always stop and say, hey, I'm on two and I need to be on one, or I'm on one and I need to be on two. Right. Um, but that's what it's doing is moving that scanning bar out of the way, out of the way or down closer, depending upon what it is that you're doing. So. Um, if you are getting that question, that's all that it is. Um, nothing's wrong. You haven't blown up your machine. Um, I get, 
I oh get my that. gosh. I yeah. get that question often. So that's all that it is, is the scanning bar that literally sits inside the machine in there. Um, that's, that's literally all that it is. So here we are back to um, that same screen. I've got um, four different cho choices here. They're pretty much the same basic things. I can choose the outsides. And if you are looking, there is some missing parts at this point um, because there's a true outside to some of these right. um, that I'm missing some of the inside. So you can see that I don't have interior lines here mm -hmm. because I only have the outside chosen. So this right. one is giving you a little bit better visual. I don't have those inside lines mm -hmm. that I needed um, for um, like the A's and the E's that we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. All right. This guy here, when we tap that, is going to give me a little bit of everything. So um, I've actually got a little bit too much, again, as we were talking about. You see we've got super heavy lines in here because it's, again, giving me some extras. It's a little harder for you guys to see that. They're really, really dark. Um, but we've got both the insides and the outsides of the insides and, and the, the outsides. outsides. All right. So we've got all of those. Um, in the ignore object size, we do have the ability to adjust that. And what that's going to do is it's going to start getting rid of the small little bits. But the other thing that we have the ability to do is we have the ability to look and zoom in. So we can zoom a little bit better, um, which is the only reason I really um, got in here. So you can see a little bit easier the really dark areas um, that are on the W over here. Um, this is not bad, but I can pretty much guarantee when we go to cut that it won't look that nice. <laughs> right. They kind of, like, they probably won't look like stars. They might just look They're like gonna circles. They're going to look like or... circles that aren't very good circles. Yeah. They're not going to look real crisp and real good. Um, so that is, it's actually not bad. Um, we could probably cut on some of that. It's not terrible, but um, we're going to go back and show you what this one looks like as well. So we do have some clean lines. It's much, much cleaner than what the last one looked like. I'm going to zoom in again so you guys can see. All right. And yeah, that's really good. So here we have, um, you can see the stars. What we end up seeing is the edge of the lines here start to touch the stars. Mm -hmm. And that's where they start to go. Is that a star or is that bleeding into here? And it starts to connect the lines and they yep. aren't really crisp and clean. But we do get the interiors here. Um, so that looks pretty good. We can zoom and this is nice and crisp. We don't have multiple edges mm -hmm. to those. So that's nice and crisp in there. So again, this is looking pretty good. And here we do have those separation lines, but we don't have the double line that we had previously. Mm -hmm. So that looks pretty good as well. If you look here, those are just straight lines. I know you can't see super well, but on these, it's just a straight line instead of being doubles, which we don't want the words anyways, but it is... Um, it is a nice uh, straight line instead of the doubled yeah. lines, which that's what we were talking about with those letters. The mm -hmm. letters are where you're really going to need those double yeah. pieces um, because it would only give you a straight line for lettering. It wouldn't give you the actual We have cutout. like a 3D part. You, right. you just have you like need, a slice. You need the cutouts. You would just have a straight line instead. So that's where those really start to come in um, into play. So I don't need um, all of these to be saved. I'm just going to grab one of them. Um, so I'm just going to get out of here and I'm going to grab, let's just do this one over here. Looks nice and clean. All right, so we've got one logo highlighted. We can preview and make sure that, yep, that's what we like. And we can save that. Again, I'm going to just put that in the machine. I could, of course, put that on the USB. Mm -hmm. um, 
the thing that when we use the save to cut data is it saves that you can do this over and over again. So, you know, I can have 10 Wonder Woman shirts, mm -hmm. <laughs> not just one. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, machine. So it's M and I'm on number 52. I can come back home now and I'll be back at the beginning. I'm going to kick out my mat and set that aside. You want me to set it over here? Nah. Make a little table out of the trash can. Okay. All right. So I have a fabric mat uh, at the ready here. And we have our fabric blade in. So, so you can see the designs that we just created. What did we end up creating? <laughs> Let's see what we have. Um, where are we at? Okay. Um, in the machine, um, we've got a single arrow and we have a double arrow. I'm going to do the double. It will take me all the way down to the bottom. And um, I've got a thread spool here and I've got some uh, parts of the, what was that called again? Pin cushion. That the one. The tomato yep. pin cushion. The, the pin cushion. Yep. That's what it was called. So I've got a lot of parts over here that I don't want. And then we've got those individual parts that we do want. So those we want to be cut probably out of one fabric, maybe the top little mm -hmm. tomato thing we can cut out of something else. Yeah. But what I need to do is get rid of the excess pieces, these little guys um, over here. Cindy wants to know, when does it become an SVG file? So, um, does it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so these are brother files because they're being created in the scanning cut. Mm -hmm. So these are, I think they're FCM when you exit out of this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that I've ever really paid attention. Mm, we got the USB stick, right? We do. Maybe. Oh, man, that's far back there. There you go. I'm gonna... She's going to look up exactly what the file extension comes out as. And um, so the brother files are uh, in F as in Frank, C as in cutting, and M as in machine. The other way you can remember that is F as in bleeping, <laughs> cutting machine. That's how you can remember FCM. Um, I didn't come up with that, by the way. Jean did, and I thought that was absolutely hilarious. And I remembered it ever since. <laughs> so, so there you go. Um, I am just putting some fabric down on our mat and... Um, the fabric mat is the stickiest mat. Um, Sarah's looking up that file. What we're going to do here on screen, I'm going to go into my edit screen. I have select arrows and you can see, I'm going to squeeze in just a little bit. I have a red box around that design there, but that's one that I actually want to cut. So I have select arrows. I can toggle between the different designs using those, or I can tap them on screen, but that's probably the easiest way to bounce between. It's, and I have a trash can here. It's still FCM. Yep. That's what I was thinking that it was, but it's been a while since I've looked. So yeah. um, to answer your question specifically, Miss Cindy, it does export as an FCM as well. So um, it does not create in SVG at all, but it can read the SVG. All right, so once I have the pieces that I don't want, I just hit the trash can. It always says, hey, are you sure? And you go, yep. And I'm still in that little area there, and I'm just going to trash all those little guys. If once I have this, I want to save it because I'm going to need to cut this repeatedly, I can. And almost there. And now I just have these large pieces um, here. So if I'm bouncing between there, there's now just four files left. I'm going to take this one and move it 
over here because that's where that fabric is. And we're going to move these here. Okay, so I have, again, my fabric mat um, in the machine. I have one fabric for the body parts of my pin cushion, and I have a second fabric for the little leafy part on top. I've got my um, files where I know my fabric is at. Um, I do have the ability to scan in the mat. Should I show them that? Yeah, why let's, not? Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to come out of here real quick. This little guy right here, up one. There we go. So this little guy right here is going to take a, tell, take a picture of my mat. So it says that right there, it's gonna scan the mat and show it as a background on screen. So it's going to do that. So um, Stephanie asks, um, can these be grouped and moved together, body of the pin cushion? Yes. Yep. The little red squares that are on the screen are our grouping tool. So if I wanted to group those items there, I can tap the red squares. I can use either the arrows like we had on the other screen, or I can select everything on screen. Since I only want those, I can select this, selecting just the items that are in that area. Now all three of those have red boxes. I can move just those around, or I can go in and make those just one item now. So they are all one, one red box now instead of three red boxes. So it's that simple. We can group right on screen. We also have the ability to group in our um, free software. So that is all that takes. You go into edit and use those red boxes to select that. All right, I have um, the parts here right over my cute hexagon fabric there, and I have the um, top piece over here on that nice light teal. All I have to do now is tell it that I want to cut. I'm going to bump that because I think that we needed it. <laughs> I don't remember. All right. We're going to cross our fingers that this works. <laughs> I don't remember what the setting on this is. All right, so um, our blade is going to come across and it's going to do a test where there's no fabric. And then it's going to go where our fabric is. And that is going to give it its depth. The, the self-adjusting blade will set based on that information. Then it cuts the fabric. And moves to the other side. That is slower than freaking molasses. I turned it down the speed <laughs> earlier um, when I was doing my flower pieces. Ah. Because I had a lot of points. Yeah, no problem. And I'm just I, like, oh. I was not using the fine blade. That is super slow. <laughs> Still less than a minute to cut all of these pieces. So we're going to be done in just a moment. All right. So. I always recommend that you check your cuts before you pull your mat out. So all we need to do is pull up and make sure that our fabric comes away clean. If it did not do that, we could go back and recut. Mm -hmm. Everything would be in exactly the same spot. So it, the blade would go right back to where it needed to go. And if your blade was getting dull and it needed a little bit extra to cut, mm -hmm. um, that would be, then you could just cut again mm -hmm. and you could adjust your blade for your future cuts without having to um, mm -hmm. replace it right away. Um, so Mary is asking, uh, what blade are we using? I am using the Thin Fabric Auto Blade. Mm -hmm. It has the gold top, which matches my gold um, fabric mat. And that is what we're using. This fabric has been starched, but there is no um, it's just no plain. fusible on there. If we were using something with a fusible, I would switch to the standard mat um, and use my 
uh, black topped auto blade. That would be the one that I would go to. So with um, those fabrics all cut, we can pull and move those off. I know I brought the spatula over <laughs> here for a reason. We can pull those right off the mat. And you would have your, there's one other piece we didn't use yet. So that is like the body behind this. And those go like that. So that is the basics of that adorable little pin so cushion there. Cute. So it is that simple to create and then cut, cut. those files. Mm -hmm. So very, very straightforward. And, um, you know, we could certainly do Wonder Woman as well, but I think we're running out of time. Yes. So, um, um, and we did want to show you um, really quickly. So if anybody has any other questions about Scan and Cut, uh, feel free to pop those up and yep. we'll go back to that. But there, um, we just got an email. We did. We know that lots of you guys are fans of Kimberbell. So we wanted to give you a sneak peek at um, some stuff that are uh, that's coming up. Um, I always think of Easy Bake Oven when I see you moving the fabric pieces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> exactly. All right. So um, let's, here we go. So um, hopefully you guys can see what um, we are seeing. I, we can't see you. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to show you a couple of things that we have here. So we have, um, look what's coming up. We have uh, new stuff from Kimberbell. So there is a gray tote. Uh, blank that's going to be out. Um, this is a big one. It's like 18 it by is something. 25, five. I think. Yep. There is a new embroidery felt pack coming up. And there and are then two new colors of leather. Two new colors of leather. Yep. Yeah, forest green and, and a camel, camel brown. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then a new Kimberbell Cuties. Cuties has been so, so popular. So um, version two is coming up uh, July uh, and December through December and um, a new quilt uh, falling for autumn. And uh, we wrote 22 inch pillow. I, I did, I thought that's what that was. No, it's a quilt. My bad. Um, Tells you what I, I was working really quickly, fast. Quickly, yes. <laughs> I had 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, a new one day Kimberbell event. This one is super cute. Um, here's a bigger picture of those Kimberbell cuties. The bigger picture of the quilt. A slightly bigger picture of this. I'm going to yep. stop Like I said, it was super sharing. fast. And all right. So um, a couple of really fun things coming up for Kimberbell. We will have, um, I will try to work on a pre-sale of the Kimberbell Cuties kit so that you guys can start getting that. Um, I can't put a price together for the little autumn quilt until we yeah, get a until fabric. Yeah, we get some more information on that. We don't quite have that coming out yet, but it is coming. Um, new felt, new leather, the new felt kit. Those Kimberbell cuties are so cute. They are. I really like um, yes. in the centers, you know, the, the mm -hmm. way that they have that put together. You choose uh, the quilt design for the center parts. Right. Um, and I really like the quilting that they've got for that. Mm -hmm. And of course there will be quilt designs that they put together for that too. So. Yeah, he's so, so, so Very cute. excited. Um, I think uh, Connie asked um, late, do you have any specials running for scan and cut blades and mats? Um, we've got like some of the consumable type things of vinyls, uh, foil, markers, those kinds of things are on sale by three or more and they're 35% off. Um, but nothing specifically on blades and mats at the moment. Not at the moment. But we did so. just get a big order in. We did. We're restocked. We, we do have them available, but, uh, But so far, that's uh, th those. That's the big sales uh, mm -hmm. items: thirty-five percent off on heat transfer or craft vinyl, mm -hmm. um, foil refills, the calligraphy pens. Um, I'm missing something. Craft. You said craft vinyl, right? I did. 
I don't um, remember what else, but any there are items, um, and they're listed on our site too. Mm -hmm. But so, uh, Cindy said the life is full blown bloom. Yes, uh, we actually have had our life had is full the, bloom the pillow out. Yeah, our fabric uh, bundle been kit been has available. been out for mm, at least a month now. Uh, so yes, it is new. Uh, you can purchase the design, the designs up, and the yep. quilting files as of today. Um, you could, you can of course purchase the mm. kit from us if you would like a fabric kit. Um, but that that was not new for us, kit wise, <laughs> since we already had it. Yeah, up. the fabric kit has been shipping now for uh, close. I think we had it ready. I think we just got it ready before we, the... Just before the storm. So mm -hmm. I think at the beginning of last week, we started shipping them out. Um, but we've had it up on the site for pre-order for a little while. Yep. So So yes, it is definitely available. Um, there is a bench pillow coming out. Shout, Shout hooray. hooray. Yep. Um, and um, that that is coming... Middle... Middle to the end, end of, of this, this month. month. And we do have those kits... We have a few still available, and we're in the process of making a few more of those mm -hmm. um, because our first batch of those are almost gone too. So, but those are currently still available, and mm -hmm. we've got more coming too. So, that one's super cute. I'm yeah. excited about that one. That one's, I don't know, I, I just really like. You weren't that excited one. at first, so I'm, I wasn't. You kind of came I'm, around. I'm, it's much cuter now that I'm seeing the actual fabrics yes. and the it's. Um, that's okay, Cindy. There is no reason it's to apologize. It's all good. No. But uh, I just, I, that's why we didn't include it in our um, coming soon, because these are little snippets of stuff that probably. It literally, they just sent us the um, yeah. the new released stuff, like. Coming soon. And I was, copy, yes. paste, picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about that 22-inch pillow. Yeah. It's what it kind of looks like. It does look like that, but it's a, and it's an actual quilt. It's a quilt. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a, My bad. I'm assuming it's. It's like those. It's one of yeah. those sizes because the um, the pattern is like seventy nine, eighty nine okay. or something dollars. So. Yeah, I didn't get that far. Yeah. I just saw the picture and it and snipped it, an and I was like, oh, it's a square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that seems like about the right. Uh, yeah. Um, season for the next one. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, um, you guys already know I love my Scan and Cut, and mm -hmm. I use it for a lot of things. But scanning in and creating files. It's um, a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And the options with these machines truly is endless. Mm -hmm. It's You can pretty much make it do almost anything that you want. It's just a matter of knowing um, what button to push. Yes. Um, so, so much fun. Yes. That one. That one. <laughs> Yes, I might have helped her do a few things, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but um, you're not wrong, Cindy. It, it is sometimes very difficult to keep up with all of the different things. But um, we are uh, we are certainly having a good time trying to uh, do more than just yes, Kimberbell. Yes, we there's, are. There's a few other things going on around here, so. Um, but the, the Scan and Cut has definitely been uh, coming up a lot a lot lately mm -hmm. with the different things, the block of the month and, and different things. So we wanted to take a minute and kind of mm -hmm. talk about how it's how easy it is. Yeah, you um, just have to do it. it. It really is. You have to push the buttons. It's not, um, it, it, they, it, it doesn't push the buttons for you. You do have to push the buttons. But that's all you have to do. Yeah. It really does the work. You just have to push the button. Yeah, cutting fabric isn't as hard as it seems. Um, they, you know, if you had one of the old ones and you struggled with cutting fabric, you've probably been hesitant about doing it again because it used to be a pain in the rump. And I'm right there with you. It did. It used to not work very well without, I mean, you had to prep through the nose, you had to, you know, starch everything. You mm -hmm. had to have this, you you know, you had to tape it down to practically, um, you know, it wasn't easy and it, it wasn't fun. It was more work than it was worth before. Um, but the fabric mat and the fabric blade make your unprepped fabric um, so easy. And the, um, the auto sensing, it, all of that makes your backed fabrics 
just so easy. Mm -hmm. it, it really, they, they listened to what we said and really, um, they really have done a great job with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot more fun. It is. <laughs> no stress, just like it's supposed to be. So we hope we've answered some of your questions. Um, if you have some more, you're always welcome to give us a call or shoot us an email and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for spending a little bit of time. Bye. Bye.